I read this article and I was like, this this is right along, Gary, with what we're thinking. That that they start their article with billionaire businessman Elon Musk is wielding significant geopolitical power with his global internet Starlink satellites. Now, just so people understand, he has six thousand uh, satellites up. You know, he he obviously has his own space company. Uh, he's got a, a a boring company where he he, he bores through um, you know Earth and makes tunnels and stuff. Um, he's got Tesla, he, very very wealthy. Starlink, they want uh, they want upwards of thirty thousand satellites. They got six thousand currently. You know, they have three million subscribers currently to the Starlink uh, satellite. They, they, this year, they're testing a. Uh, you mentioned the phone. They're matching satellite phones so that you can just have it on your normal phone. And, and that that's tremendous ability. They, they, he's got $6 billion uh, already in, in revenue coming in for uh, for the, the Starlink. It's only going to get bigger as subscribers. We were just on the cruise ship in last, last week in Alaska, and uh, their internet was provided by Starlink. And so, I mean, here you have – here's a guy that has all of this technological capability and power and – this is what they say. Private space companies are meeting and often exceeding the capabilities of governments. This is the Axios article. Giving not just technological but also geopolitical power to those who operate them. It's not just states in space making these decisions anymore. Caitlin Johnson, a space policy expert at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, tells Axios. They also said, um, he remember when Elon Musk was causing trouble because... Russia cut the internet when they invaded Ukraine, but Elon provided Starlink to Ukraine yeah. and became an enemy of Russia. <laughs> so you have, a, you have a single individual, a private individual, now on the world geopolitical stage. And that was the point of the article, is he's wielding significant power in geopolitics. And we go, and when I read that, I was like, well, this is exactly what we've been talking about. It is. Now, here's the thing. I'm, I'm still looking at Re Revelation 17 about the ten horns and ten, they being ten kings. <clears throat> and here's something that just absolutely jumps out at me. Verse 13 says, They have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast. One mind. Now, wait a minute. Let, you, your tendency is to run on past that. But stop and think of it. Yes. AI. Everybody talks about a global superintelligence controlling everything. And here, in this context, they have one mind. She'll give their power and strength to the beast. And again, these kings have, do not have a country, there, no. but they have power and strength. And they have one mind, which is actually bigger than a country. It's a global thing. And... That's what we're looking at now. <clears throat> well, and, and I think so. Let, like you said, we, we, let's not let's not let's not go too fast here. Let's let's dwell on this because power and exousia, the the, the idea, of authority or capability, and so imagine for a moment. And we know this. We know this. They have no kingdom. They will receive that authority to rule for one hour as kings. So the word as there is a simile, like or as. Right. If I say I have something like an apple in my hand, well, it doesn't mean I have an apple. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a simile. And it says here, they receive authority for one hour like kings or as kings with the beast. So they're not kings, but they're like kings. And so imagine it's, it's like, let's make a deal, okay, between the Antichrist and the Ten Kings. And he comes and he says, okay, look, I'll let you guys rule with me for this, for this one hour, this, this time of his, uh, of his kingdom. But I want your power and authority. I want your power. I want your influence. I want your capabilities. Okay, so let's make a deal. For example, let's just go with Elon for a moment. Okay, I need to have something to track people. I need to have something to track people worldwide. This is going to be a worldwide dominated uh, empire. We know that from Revelation 13. So Elon, I want you to give me control of your Starlink and all the things that are set up by then. And he says, okay. So all of a sudden, boom, this Antichrist figure goes from nothing to having control over all this tracking ability with a system, that, with technological system that's already been set up by this one of, the, one of the ten kings. Secondly, he goes to, let's say, Zuckerberg. Hey, Zuckerberg, yeah. you want to rule with me? I need you to censor 
control information because we need and and this is what they're already doing they're absolutely right right, as we speak as we speak (laughs) so you think about the power and the capability so zuckerberg has the ability to to direct certain types of information whether it's through instagram or facebook they can like i have several people that try to send me things and they go hey mono i can't send this to you instagram won't let me send it it's blocking it for misinformation and so think about that now how did it understand that as misinformation right who decided that it was a single figure so here again you have power and influence and capability for these people that they wield it worldwide worldwide and that all this technological capability klaus schwab and others again they said it we're going to do it through technology he also elon musk also he's like the the quintessential technocrat he also has Neuralink. Right? Ability to, to, to have a brain interface. In fact, uh, rumor has it that, that they're much further along with that than they're letting on. Uh, the, the, the idea of direct contact with the human brain hooked to a global uh, system, uh, a, uh, a synchronous system, a global system is their goal. Well, you know, that's like every sci-fi book you've ever <laughs> it read. It really is. It, but it's also like the Bible because Daniel and Revelation just merge together. And that it, once you know what you're looking at, it, suddenly it all pops into focus. Yep. I think – and let, let's, let's step back for a moment because, again, traditions are hard to overcome. And so the traditional approach of these – of ten regions from the Club of Rome – you know, I've seen, I've seen these uh, these regions come and go, and I'm not even saying that you we're, there isn't going to be ten regions. I, I'm not even saying that that could be the case, but I don't think that we can base it on scripture because the scripture doesn't say ten regions. It says these ten, these ten figures, these ten kings who are kings without a kingdom. So it would, you know, it's reasonable to think in terms of that you know maybe post rapture or whatever that the world is divided in ten regions for the sake of organization, but it doesn't. The Bible doesn't require that. So again, it could happen, but it still doesn't mean that these ten kings are uh, are not these oligarchs or these technocrats, as as you, you've been writing about, which I think is is great, because when we think about that, they again do not have a kingdom. They, they're not there, but they have something to offer. Uh, I'll read to you a couple other little things here, just to show us even more. They write. This is the Axios article. Uh, or Axios, however you want to say it. As a result, the U.S. government has become increasingly reliant on Musk and SpaceX to launch people to the International Space Station and satellites to orbit that underpin military communications and intelligence gathering. Over time, the list of space activities that only the U.S. government does or that primarily serve the government has really shrunk, and the list of things the commercial sector is doing has grown, says Gregory Allen, a senior fellow in the Strategic Technologies Program at CSIS. SpaceX is at the forefront of the trend, but by no means is the only one. Space companies are increasingly providing satellite remote sensing and high bandwidth satellite communications. So here again, and you know, Gary, as I've been giving some presentations uh, about this for a while, and I'll, one of the things that I mentioned was, I said, hey, this was, I don't know, six, eight months ago. I said, what, what would happen if there was an a, uh, explosion or something on the International Space Station or some problem, and they needed a rescue? Well, the fact of the matter is the U.S. government, the NASA, the space agency, the, I mean, the greatest superpower in the history of the world is the United States. And the United States could not go, get a because their space program is in, in, in flux right now. They could not get somebody up there. So it, they're not going to say, Houston, we have a problem. They're going to say, Elon, <laughs> Elon we have a problem. <laughs> the, like so that. think about this. The greatest superpower <laughs> in the history of the world is going to call a private individual who has power, capability, and influence. Which is happening right now. It is. It's interesting. <laughs> I got an article right here from, from August 9th. I mean, this is just a few days ago. And it says... Uh, you know, I put this out there, and then I get this like this gift: two astronauts stuck in space indefinitely after eight day mission goes awry. And then it says, um, "I'll just I won't read the whole article here, but it says uh, at the moment NASA must decide whether the Starliner, which is made by Boeing, can be made fit for traveling back to Earth, 
or if Wilmore and Williams should wait until a SpaceX Dragon craft can retrieve them, meaning they'll remain at the space station until 2025. SpaceX will launch its Dragon craft for its own mission next month. Blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. What craft? Uh, I believe you used the word dragon. SpaceX Dragon. Yes. Who's the dragon? We, uh, well, I agree. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. But yes, I've been watching this, this dilemma with the uh, directional thrusters and Boeing once again. Yep. Uh, Boeing's uh, having a run of, of some technical problems. <laughs> Aren't they? But, but again, you, you make an excellent, excellent point. And we, all, we keep pointing back to the oligarchs, to the, to the, the wealthy oligarchs and their global uh, panache. I mean, they've got power. All around the world, they've got money, they have got underground connections, and if you have eyes to see, what we're reading in the Bible is coming to pass. 